So I wanted to just kind of give a quick overview of adaptive radiations based on some of the resources that you have available to you. Uh, first of all, definitions of adaptive radiation will depend a little bit on where you're looking. So for example, this is, this is a 2020 paper that I uh, put in the shared Google Drive that has information about adaptive radiations and conservation biology. It's published by Rosemary Gillespie and colleagues in 2020. And they actually use a definition that's directly from the 1998 edition of your textbook. So this, this is, uh, and just for context, this is a working group with uh, some of the top researchers on adaptive radiation today. So it is kind of funny that they're using um, a definition that's, you know, more than 20 years old from uh, an earlier edition of your textbook. But it's, it's a pretty good definition. So in general, an adaptive radiation is uh, an evolutionary divergence of members of a single phylogenetic lineage into a variety of different adaptive forms. Now, uh, usually adaptive radiations have to have that sort of variety of different adaptive forms as a component of it. Another, another feature that sometimes people use to define adaptive radiations is rapidity, or you know, it, it has to be a fast divergence. So obviously there is speciation involved here, but uh, according to some researchers, uh, a feature of adaptive radiations is rapid diversification. And so in another paper that you guys have access to, which is written by someone with the last name Chikansky Moyer and someone with the last name of Rundell in 2019, they define adaptive radiation as a pattern of species diversification in which a lineage of species occupies a diversity of ecological roles and the evolution of ecological and phenotypic diversity within a rapidly multiplying lineage. So in this case, um, a pattern of species diversification in which you know, a lineage or a clade will uh, come to occupy lots of different ecological roles. And that's, that's saying more or less the same thing as this definition. And then in the second definition, uh, there's, there's this added element of rapidity. So it, ha it has to be kind of a rapid increase in the number of ecological roles that are present within a clade or within a lineage. Now, of course, uh, speed, you know, rapidly, that's still somewhat subjective. And so there's no hard and fast cutoff for how diverse an adaptive radiation has to be with respect to the number of species. And there's no absolute cutoff in terms of how rapidly the phenotypes and sort of ecological roles present within the phylogeny or within the lineage, within the clade have to be. So in, in some of the textbook definitions of adaptive radiation, you'll see adaptive radiations playing out across a variety of different time scales. So if you just go through your textbook, the Fatoima and Kirkpatrick 2017, um, and just look for where they're using the term adaptive radiation, there's, there's a lot of different cases. So in some cases, um, you know, they have to, you obviously have to play, you have to pay homage to the Galapagos finches. They're an adaptive radiation that probably uh, diversified over the course of, you know, less than 2 million years. And we'll talk a little bit more about the silver swords in lecture. They probably diversified uh, over the course of less than six million years, or you know, less than five million years. So, in terms of geologic time, this is this is pretty quick, right? The adaptive radiation of the mammals is another classic example that that Gigi Simpson, a paleontologist who was you know maybe one of the the top sort of yeah paleontological thinkers about evolutionary biology in in the mid twentieth century. He, he wrote a lot about the adaptive radiation of mammals, and that's another classic example, but that took place over a much longer period of time. So the adaptive radiation of mammals, especially after the extinction of the non-avian dinosaurs, took place, you know, over a period of, you know, maybe tens of millions of years, as opposed to like less than five millions of, uh, less than five million years. But it did result in a huge variety of different, um, 
different ecological niches that were occupied by uh, the mammals. So, you know, after the extinction of the non-avian dinosaurs, mammals diversified into a huge variety of body forms from whales to bats, obviously. So uh, adaptive radiation is used in that context as well, but, um, and it's, it's still, I think many would argue that that's a fairly rapid increase in the number of species and the number of ecological roles that the different species are uh, taking up. But it's, it is very different than um, the scales of time that we're talking about with respect to um, uh, Hawaiian Silver Sword Alliance and uh, Galapagos Finches. So I am going to, I really am just going to kind of scroll through this textbook because I think it is kind of a nice overview for you to see um, where they, where it pops up because it pops up kind of throughout uh, in a few different sections. One, one important point about adaptive radiation and how it might occur is through ecological character displacement, which we talked about in the run up of exam two. So diversifying selection or divergent selection can sometimes be um, an important part of adaptive radiation. That's, that's how we often think of it as, as taking place. The Ecology of Adaptive Radiations is a, is a book by Dolph Schluter who, who has done some of the most important work or supervised people doing some of the most important work on uh, the stickleback system that we always talk about in the context of divergent selection. This is, <laughs> this is a fake adaptive radiation that somebody made up. It is kind of a funny addition to the book because there's a lot of real examples of adaptive radiation that they could have talked about, but I don't know, I guess the art is really cool for these, but um, you know, the, the principle that this is, uh, that this is illustrating is, is that there are, um, in adaptive radiations, you see a variety of different uh, morphologies arise from the same basic body plan. The cichlids of some of the African rift lakes are maybe one of the most spectacular examples of an adaptive radiation, just because there's so many fishes and many of them probably speciated in uh, just, you know, less than 20,000 years or something like that. So the, the cichlids of the Great African Rift Lakes are really, really spectacular um, in terms of how many species there are. Your textbook also talks about adaptive radiation in the context of the Cambrian explosion, which we'll talk about after this exam, which we'll, we'll talk about um, next week a little bit in the context of the fossil record. But um, yeah, this kind of, it, it transpired over such a short time, only 20 million years. So that's actually similar to the sort of time scales that we're talking about for mammal adaptive radiations uh, after the extinction of the non-avian dinosaurs, you know, 65 million years ago. And this in the fossil record is, is talking about another adaptive radiation um, at, at the end between the Triassic and the Jurassic. So there's, um, there's, there's a, a series of adaptive radiations that are associated with extinction events that you'll notice. Another great adaptive radiation was the snakes. So many snakes. So this is talking about the adaptive radiation of mammals. Uh, this is the adaptive radiation of um, rapid proliferation of even more diverse birds and mammals. So this that's essentially saying adaptive radiation. Just a summary. Most order of placental mammals originated in the late Cretaceous, but underwent adaptive radiation in the early Paleogene. So we'll talk about we'll talk more about that in the context of the fossil record after you turn in your exams. Cichlid 
fishes, whose spectacular adaptive radiation was introduced in Chapter 9, are limited to freshwater in Madagascar, Africa, and Tropical America. Um, cool. Yeah, and here we're talking a little bit more about the geography of adaptive radiations. And this is the adaptive radiations of the Hawaiian honey creepers, which we'll talk about in the other lectures a little bit as well. So here it's, it's talking about the lineage through time plots. Uh, to level off with time, which is which is kind of a cool concept. So lineage through time plots, if you imagine instead of um, population growth in just a population, imagine species growth in a clade. So instead of multiplying individuals in a population, um, you have a multiplying number of species in a clade. Sometimes in evolutionary time, the number of species that arise follows a similar growth curve as the number of individuals in a population. So if you're imagining, you know, multiplying E. coli, for example, the number of, of the population of E. coli in a test tube starts out at kind of a, a slow increase and then it quickly escalates into, you know, a, a typical exponential growth curve and then eventually it levels off um, as they reach the carrying capacity for the test tube. Lineage through time plots can sometimes show, or they, they happen to sometimes show a similar trend for species in a particular clade. Um, and I'll talk about that a little bit with, res with respect to some simulation studies that I, I'm gonna talk about at the end of uh, the last lecture I'll post for the adaptive radiations. Adaptive radiation. Oh yeah, and here's just the glossary definition. Yeah, so here they've, <laughs> so as you'll notice from the, the Gillespie et al. 2020 paper, there's, they, they have actually clarified the definition here to include the relatively short interval of geologic time. And the term evolutionary radiation describes a pattern of rapid diversification without assuming that the differences are adaptive. So usually when we teach about adaptive radiations, we um, teach people that sort of the, the way that we understand the driving force for rapid accumulation of lineages, rapid diversification is something like divergent natural selection. However, in some cases, there are clades that seem to be made up of species that seem to be fairly ecologically similar. And so in that case, one might invoke the idea of non-adaptive radiations. So we're not gonna talk about it too much in class, but if you're interested in this idea, if you think it's kind of wacky and um, kind of goes against the grain a little bit, you're welcome to read the paper um, and let me know what you think. All right, I think that's all I'm gonna talk about in this little quick introductory lecture, but I just wanted to give you kind of an overview of you know thinking about adaptive radiations and then I'm gonna dive into it in the next lecture. Okay, bye.